Hey everyone, Laura here with Rags to Rugs and today we're going to be making a crocheted half round rug. We're going to be making a 36 inch wide using two inch wide fabric strips and a Q size crochet hook. And as an added bonus, we're going to be making, uh, putting a scallop border on our rug. Now, if you've been hanging with us on our YouTube channel, recently we added a video on how to make the round uh, crocheted rug. This was the actual 24 inch rug that we made in that class. Um, and if I do say so myself, it turned out really nice, a perfect shape and it lays perfectly flat. Um, and thank you, by the way, for all the kudos and the thumbs up. Thank you for your comments and your emails. Thank you for your phone calls. Um, we really appreciate uh, that feedback because it, it allows us to understand what you would like from us on our channel. And so having said that, um, one of the several of the emails that we received were, when are you going to be adding the half round pattern? So today's that day. Um, so thank you again for that. We appreciate it. Um, now you can use this pattern that we're going to learn today um, on virtually any size rug. You're not going to be limited to the 36 inch wide rug that we're going to be making. Um, you can use it to make a smaller rug or even a yard, larger rug. This is the size that we're going to be making. Um, and again, it's got the scallop border on it. But if you want one a little smaller, for instance, you can make um, a rug. This is a, happens to be a 32 inch uh, half round. I use our tea stain uh, broadcloth to make it. And of course I added the scallop border. Anybody that knows me knows how much I love the scallop border. It just adds a charming appeal to your rugs. And this is out of our bluegrass green uh, broadcloth that we did the scallop and the same fabric we're going to be using in our class today. Now you're not just limited to fabric to make these rugs. For instance, um, again, if anybody knows me out there, you know how much I love our wonderful six ply jute. And this is one of my personal rugs out of our living room. This is, uh, is under our TV console. Uh, this is a generous 40 inch wide scallop, uh, or excuse me, um, half round rug with the scallop border using our six ply jute. So again, this pattern that you're gonna to learn today, you're gonna to love it because you can use it for virtually any size fabric or jute. So we're gonna set those aside. Now, if you are gonna follow along with the, the video today, making your own rug, you are gonna to need to gather up a few supplies. So you're going to need a pair of shears, round up a Q size crochet hook, the big jumbo crayon size, um, you're going to need about a pound and a half of two inch wide pre-connected fabric strips um, or about roughly six yards of fabric to make the rug that we're going to make today. And again, if you would, just like on the round rug pattern, uh, round up some scrap paper and number them three through 13, 11 pieces. And um, uh, for you avid crocheters, you may not need this, but if you're like me and get easily distracted, these come in real handy if you get distracted and pulled away from your pattern and you, when you come back, you know exactly where you left off. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is do a simple slip knot. And if you watched our YouTube video on our, my 10 best tips, this is the way I like to train doing a, a, a slip knot, but for you avid crocheters, if you wanna do it whatever way you wanna do it, that's just perfectly fine. But we kinda like to demonstrate doing this. And I've got my, the fabric that I'm gonna be using to make my rug, and we're gonna pinch it right between my pinky and my third finger there. Wind it around, pinch it again. We're gonna feed off this first loop over my index finger, the second loop here, and the remaining loop I'm gonna take off my fingers. I'm gonna pull just a little bit on the longer piece of, of fabric. And then I'm gonna adjust it with the shorter piece. Just like a necktie, you're just gonna tighten that down just a little bit, adjust it, slip in your crochet hook, and we're ready to go. The first thing that we're going to do now that we've got our slip knot done is we're going to chain four and we're gonna slip stitch those four chains to form a ring. So the way we're gonna do this, and again, I hold the fabric very loosely on the palm of my hand. We're gonna hook the fabric, draw it through, one, two, three, and four. Four chains are now made. We're gonna insert our hook in the very first chain, draw the fabric through, 
all the way through to form a slip stitch to form this ring and we're going to chain one just like that. We're going to tighten that ring just a tiny bit and we're going to find the center of the ring which is right here. The next thing we're going to do is do three single crochet stitches in the center of that ring that we just made. We're going to insert our hook in the center of the ring, hook the fabric, draw it through, hook the fabric, and draw it through again to make one single crochet stitch. We've got two more to go. Insert our hook, draw it through, hook our fabric and draw it through, and one more time makes three. Okay? Now we're already on round one. And what we're going to do now is each of those three single crochets in the center of that ring, we're going to insert two single crochets in each of them. First thing we're going to do though is we're going to finish up this previous uh, pattern. Chain one and we're going to turn because again this is a half round so instead of going all the way around multiple times as we did with our round rug, now what we're going to be doing is chaining one and turning our pattern all the way around. And now you can clearly see those three, two, three chains from the, or single crochets from the previous round. We're going to put two single crochets into each one of those. Insert my hook, one, insert my hook in that same space again, two, and move on. Here's the next one. Insert my hook, one, insert my hook again, two, and repeat that one more time. Insert my hook, one, insert my hook again, two. We're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work again, just like that. We're already moving on to round two. Now this time it says one single crochet, two single crochets, and the next single crochet. And if you'll notice the asterisks, that will be always be your clue in this pattern to repeat what's in between the asterisks three times, times three. One single crochet, and then two single crochets. And let me show you what I mean by that. We've turned our work, that very first stitch very clearly is right here. Insert your hook and do one. Move on to the next one and do two. One. And insert your again, hook again, two. Next stitch, one. Next stitch, two. And this is the third time now. Insert your hook, one. Insert your hook. Now this one's kind of dragged off the end there. There it is. Insert your hook and we're going to do two. So to finish round two now, all we're going to do is do one chain. And again, we're going to turn our work around and go back the other direction. And we're going to start round three. Now the only thing that's different between round two and round three is that we're going to be doing one single crochet in the next two, and then it says INC. INC is short in crochet jargon to, for increase. This is the same as putting two single crochets in the next single crochet. It's called increasing to relieve tension. From now on, anytime you see increase, INC, you know that we're going to be putting two single crochets in that next stitch or uh, reinserting your hook a second time in that next stitch. Let me show you what I mean. So round three, and again, the asterisks are going to indicate that this is your pattern that you're going to repeat three times. We're going to do one single crochet in the next two. There's one there. Move on to the next one. One there. And we're going to increase on the next stitch, which means we're going to insert our hook two times in that next space. One, two. The pattern says to repeat the same thing three times. So we're going to do one here, one here, and we're going to increase. Insert your hook two times in this next space. One and two. 
one here, one here, find that last stitch, and we're going to increase. And again, that last one's always a little bit tight, but it's right there. Insert your hook, and we're going to increase by inserting our hook a second time in that same exact space. Chain one, and we're going to turn. Now that was round three already, and I've got my marker that I'm going to set aside now because we finished round three, and this is going to be my clue if I get distracted that I know exactly where we are on the pattern. So I'm going to move that aside. We're already on round four of our rug. Again, if you look closely at this pattern, and this is where it gets really fun, is that the pattern only changes by this number right here. One single crochet and the next three versus two there, and then increase. There's our asterisks telling us to repeat the pattern within those asterisks, and we're going to do that three times. Very redundant, always just exactly the same. Turning our work, finding that first single crochet from the previous round right here, we're going to insert our hook, one, move on to the next one, two, this time is calling for three. And I'm going to unroll some more fabric here real quick. That's what the great part of these rolls is, is that all you have to do is unroll it and keep on trucking. So we just finished the single crochet in the next three, and now we're going to do that increase, which means we're going to insert a hook in the next stitch a second time to help relieve tension. And we're going to repeat the pattern two more times. Here's the next stitch, one, two, three, increase, one, insert my hook second time in that same space, two, moving on, one, two, three, and increase. There's that last one that's sometimes hard to find. Insert our hook once, insert our hook twice. We're going to chain one, and we're going to turn, and we're going to turn our, we just finished round four, so we're going to turn this over. If I get distracted, I know exactly where I left off. So now we're moving on to round five. Now take off the other ones, and I put the fresh one up here. There's our asterisk. Contained within those asterisks is our pattern. The only thing that's changed right now is this number right there. One single crochet in the next four, and then we're going to increase by inserting our hook a second time. Three times, this pattern within the asterisk, chain and turn. For a turn my work, I'm going to insert my hook in the next stitch, and we're going to follow along four more times. Two, three, Four, we're going to increase, and by now you know exactly what that means. We're going to insert our hook once and twice. Next stitch, one, doing four now. Make sure I got the next one, yes. Two, three, four, increase. There's one, two, Moving on, one, two, three, four. We've reached that last stitch already. We're going to insert our hook a second time in that space because we are increasing on this last stitch. One, two, chain one, and turn. It's like a dance. We're moving along really quickly. We just finished round five. On the chance that we might get distracted, I'm going to turn this over so I know exactly where we're going to pick up, and that will be on round six. Again, the only difference is this number right here. Within the asterisk, one single crochet in the next five, and then increase three times, chain and turn. Find that first stitch, one, two, three, four, 
five. We're going to increase at this point two times in that space. One, two, three, four, five. Keep those stitches nice and loose when you're doing this. Increase, one, insert again, two, one, two, three, four, five, last stitch, oops, we're going to find that stitch and we're going to insert it twice, one, two, because the last stitch is an increase, chain one, <laughs> chain one, and turn your work Flip your number over, we're done with six, and we are already on round seven, believe it or not. I'm going to unwind some more fabric here, make sure I have plenty. We're gonna put round seven up here, and we're ready to move on. Same thing, only different. This is the only number that's changed. So here we go. Round seven, we're going to, in single crochet in the next six stitches. That's two, three, four, five, six, and then we're going to increase. One, and a two. Single crochet in the next six again. One, two, three, four, five, six, increase, insert your hook, and again, again to relieve tension as we make that turn around the corner there, around the, around the bend. Now we're going to do the next six, one, two, three, four, five, six, that last stitch is here, that means we need to increase, right there. Okay, we're ready for that last stitch, we're going to increase by inserting a hook two times, we're going to chain, we're going to turn our work all the way around, we just finished round seven, so my little notes, I'm going to turn one over. We're moving on already to round eight. Again, the only difference is this number right here. So let's move on. The next seven, one, it's getting heavy. Two, I'm gonna test my arm strength here. Three, four, five, six, seven. Increase. Get a workout. I'm working up a sweat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're going to increase. One, insert again, two, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, find that last stitch, increase, one, two, chain one, and turn your work. We just finished round eight. I'm going to turn my little cheat sheet over there. And we're starting round nine. Again, you can see the pattern. It's very, very simple. Eight stitches, increase, times three, chain and turn. I'm going to feed off some more a wonderful fabric here. 
All right, next eight. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're ready to increase. One, two, and back to our eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you're going to increase. Okay. Insert your hook a second time for that increase. And moving on, one, two, three, four. If anybody tells you you don't get any exercise by doing crocheting, they're crazy. My arms are throbbing right now. Seven, eight. We're going to find that last stitch right there. Increase by inserting it that second time. We're going to chain one and we're going to turn. Now you can see how repetitive this is. This is round 10. We're going to move our, our little marker here and we're going to start round 10. The only thing that has changed with this is nine. Uh, we're going to insert our hook nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're ready to increase already. First part of three on this round. Increase here, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're going to increase one and two. One, two, three, oops, I need more fabric. Fabulous spools of ours. Makes it easy. Spoils me. Continuing on. We've got two more, three more, excuse me, two. And we're going to find that last stitch. Insert it two times to increase, chain one, and turn our work. Now, I have a little challenge for you. I'm going to take these away, and we're going to, I'm going to challenge you to do the next three rounds all by yourself. So we're going to do 11, round 11. 12, and 13 on your own. Where you can pause the video and it, there's your pattern. Again, the only thing that's changed is this number right here. 10, 11, 12. I'm gonna work on these three rounds. You're gonna work on these three rounds. And then we're gonna come back in just a few minutes. So just pause the video at this point. Now, when we come back at this point right here, guess what? We're going to learn how to add that scallop border to your rug. That charming appeal that you frame your rug with, it just looks so amazing. I'm going to teach you how to do that. So when we come back, go ahead and work on these three rounds. I'm going to do the same. We'll come back and do a scallop border, okay? Okay, so I have a question for you. How did you do on the three round challenge that I gave for you? 
Did it work out okay? Was it as easy as, as it's been? All we changed was this number right here. So at this point, if it all went well for you, and it did for mine, because mine is, we're ready, hopefully we're on the same page, we're ready to start the next round. And the next round is gonna be super easy. It's round 14. I'm gonna take these off. We're nearing the end of our rug already. And it's like unbelievable how fast this has gone. This next round, round 14, is super easy because we're just going to be doing one single crochet and every single stitch. There's not gonna be any increases. You should have a total of 45 stitches at this point. So we're gonna just do one all the way across, chain one and turn. So you can do this with me. I've already chained and I've turned and I'm just, all I'm gonna do now is do one single crochet and every single one of these stitches, again, we're not gonna do any increases. That's three, four, five. I'm gonna turn a little bit more so you can see this. Six, seven. Super easy, eight, nine, and 10. Fourth of the way there already. There's 11, 12, 13, 14, all hung up here a little bit, 15, 16, I don't need to count. So I'm just gonna keep on working. You guys keep working. Finish off this round with single crochets. It should be, like I said, 45 stitches. If you've got your pattern on each of those rounds correct. We're about halfway, a little over halfway. And the next thing that we're gonna do is that fun scalloped border, super easy. You're gonna love it. About two thirds of the way done now. We're so close to finishing this run already. I can, I'm sure you can imagine how quickly you can make gifts for birthdays and anniversaries and graduations, weddings, Christmas. You can start on your Christmas gifts already with these beautiful half rounds. So just a few more stitches and we'll be done with this round and ready to start that beautiful scalloped border. One more stitch, stitch number 45. We're gonna chain and we're gonna turn. I'm gonna turn my work around. And the final round is round 15. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now there's a lot of pattern here, but don't let it scare you because it's really, really simple. Going back to the pattern, we're going to start out with one single crochet in the next two, and there's that asterisk, and there's that asterisk. This is our scallop border pattern right here, and we're going to do that nine times, okay? So let's start out with this first part. I've already chained one, and I've turned. We're going to put one single crochet in the first two stitches there, one, two. Now, if you've never done a double crochet, the crochet abbreviation is DC. And the very next stitch, we're going to do five double crochets. So let me show you how if you've never done those. We're, we're going to hook the fabric first, insert our hook, hook the fabric again. You've got three loops now on your hook. See that? Hook the fabric draw it through two of those loops, hook the fabric and draw it through the remaining two. That's one double crochet. Hook the fabric, insert it in that same stitch, hook it again, three loops on your hook, hook it through two, hook it through the remaining two. Whoops, don't let it fall off your hook. <laughs> now that's two and we need to do five in this very same stitch. Hook it, insert your hook, hook it again through two, insert your hook through the remaining two, that's three, four, and one more, makes five. Through two, through the remaining two. 
Now what it says is SK1. That means skip the next stitch and put two single crochets in that next one. So we're going to skip this stitch and we're going to put two single crochets right here. It's like an increase. One, not doubles, just singles. Okay, let me unwind some more fabric here real fast. And then we're going to skip one again and we're going to, there's our asterisk, that means we're going to start our pattern all over again right here. So five double crochets. We've did two, skipped one, and we're going to do five right here. Hook the fabric, three on the hook, hook the fabric through two, hook the fabric through the remaining two. Hook the fabric, insert the hook, hook the fabric, three loops on your hook, hook the fabric and through two, hook the fabric through the remaining two. That's two, three, four, and the last one, five. We've already done the two beautiful scallops on the edge of our rug. Now we're gonna go repeat this. We're gonna skip one right here, and we're gonna put two in the next one, and then skip one again. One single crochet, two single crochet, skip one, and guess what? We're back to the beginning of this pattern. So we're gonna do five double crochets, making another scallop. Hook the fabric, insert, hook the fabric three loops, through two of those, through the remaining two, again, again, two more times, hook the fabric, insert, hook the fabric three loops, through two of those, through the remaining two, we've got one more. To our pattern, we're going to skip one and then two in the next. Skip one, two single crochets here, just like an increase. One, two, skip one, and we're back to the beginning of our pattern with five double crochets here. One, two, three, okay, keep on going. There's one, two, three, four, hook that fabric, hook it again, and the last double crochet, and we'll start our pattern again, where we're going to skip one, two, and the next. So we're going to skip this one right here. We're going to put two single crochets right here, one, two. We're going to skip one, and we're going to start the pattern again. Five double crochets right here. Two. Hook the fabric, insert the hook. Hook the fabric, draw through two. And again, two. Hook the fabric, this is number four. And number five. It's getting so heavy, it's sliding off the table. Sorry about that. The pattern says to skip one and then two. So we're going to skip this one. We're going to put two single crochets in here. One, two. We're going to skip one and start the pattern once more. Skip one, five here. Hook the fabric first. Insert. Hook the fabric, draw through two. Hook the fabric, draw through the remaining two. We're going to do it four more times. Come here, you stay up here. Let me count here, let me see. That's, that's four, we need one more. Hook the fabric, insert it. Hook the fabric, three loops on my hook. Hook the fabric, draw through two. And then hook the fabric through the remaining two. We're going to skip one two in here, one, and a second one. We're going to skip one, we're going to repeat the pattern, do five double crochets here, one, 
two, three, oops, drop that one, three, four, oh, my arm is so tired, five, I'm getting a workout guys, skip one, two here, one, insert again two, skip this one, five right here. We're so close to the end. One, oops, I need some more fabric. Okay, that was one. Pick up where we left off. Hook the fabric, insert. Three loops on my hook. Hook the fabric, draw through two. Hook the fabric, the remaining two. That's two double crochets. We need three more in this stitch. There's three. And four. And five. We're gonna skip one, two here. One, two. Skip one, five right here. This is the last scallop that we're gonna do on this rug. There's one. Ah, come on now. Okay, I hooked something wrong. That's two. Three. Four. And five. Come on now. Try that one again. Five. I think my arms are just getting tired. The pattern calls now to skip one, and we're going to put one single crochet in the very last two stitches. One, and the last stitch. Insert our hook, one single crochet, and to finish it off, what you're going to do is clip your fabric, and you're going to draw that all the way through. Pull that tail all the way through, and you're going to use your safety pin to secure this on the back side of your rug. Now, we've got another video on the YouTube channel that shows you how to weave in those tails, so refer to that, okay? But in the meantime, look at this. Now, isn't that the most beautiful half crocheted rug you've ever seen with a beautiful scallop border, beautifully shaped. It's going to lay beautifully flat. And one thing I want you to note is this line right here. Look how nice and straight that is. So when you slide that under your toe kick of your cabinetry, your vanity, your kitchen cabinets or whatever, it's going to be a nice, beautiful line. So was that fun or what? Making a half round rug with a scallop border, a great gift for who knows, all the friends and family on your guest list. But it's, it's super easy. Uh, the pattern, again, can make virtually any size. So it's limitless. If you want to make a great big 48 inch half round, go for it. If you want to make it with fabric or with jute, it's, it's wonderful. But thank you so much for watching our video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned from it. And um, stay in touch. Please subscribe to our channel because we've got a couple more really exciting videos coming up and we look forward to having you join us. And keep those comments coming because we do read them and we do try our best to respond to them. Um, but in the meantime, make it a super great day.